We're all attracted to people all the time. What is it that attracts us to others? And what do others find attractive about you? These are some of the questions our team is going to try and answer in this series of videos. With millions of people to choose from, finding that perfect someone shouldn't be that difficult. But the media, social pressures and human nature itself have turned it into a mystery. We're surrounded by manipulated images, celebrity and glossy perfection. We're given rules about dating through books, websites and the press. They all pressure us to conform to an ideal of what is attractive. But what's the truth? It's time for science to tackle the subject. Through a series of experiments, our team are going to piece together some of the clues to this enormously complex phenomenon. And in these videos, they will explore the science of attraction. The media has always influenced what we consider to be attractive and affects how many people perceive themselves. Why are we so critical of our own image? Is it just social pressure, an exposure effect due to the images we see, or is there something else at work, and can it be manipulated? In this video, the team take a group of young couples and put to the test whether what we see is really what we get. I don't want that to be how I look. <laughs> but you definitely look better in that one. And a member of the team goes through an extreme transformation as we expose the tricks of manipulating images. But first, here's Kat. We see ourselves in the mirror every day when we clean our teeth and wash our faces. However, this mirrored or reversed image isn't how our friends and family see us, but it's the one we become accustomed to. There is a concept which states that a person's repeated exposure to something will enhance its perceived value, and it's known as the mere exposure hypothesis. In other words, the more we see or experience something, the more normal it becomes, and the more we like it. So today, we're taking five couples and running a little experiment to see how the mere exposure hypothesis affects our perception of ourselves and other people. Hosting the experiment is Charlie. He's going to explain to our couples what they're here for. Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie. Thank you for coming along today. Uh, Paul, our photographer, is just going to be taking some quick pictures of you. And then out of those pictures, we're going to ask you to pick your favourites. Just have a bit of fun, really. Nothing too stressful. Just enjoy yourselves. <laughs> We'll be showing each person two photos of themselves and two of their partner. All right, Kurt. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm your photographer. Look straight into the camera lens. Fantastic. And a smile. Then we'll be asking them to choose their favourite from each pair. What they don't know is that both photographs are identical, apart from one has been flipped to create a mirrored image. If the mirror exposure hypothesis is correct, each person should choose the mirrored photos of themselves as that is the image they are most used to seeing. OK, so now that the photos are ready, it's time for the moment of truth. Let's find out which ones they prefer. By the way, image A is the mirrored photo and image B is the normal one. I'd say I like this one better. I like my smile better in this one. Seems like I've got a nicer side to me. Come on. My smile is less wonky. And it's a bit of angle. I prefer that one because it looks less wonky and it feels more right. I'm going to go with this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I really can't pinpoint it, but that is that seems more appealing. This one. Just think the light looks a little bit better. This one. I think it's more what I what I feel I look like. It's definitely that one, because I look different in that one. It just looks more like me. This one. There's something in the face. There's it's the way the face is angled. I think I prefer this one. It's not actually. I'm gonna change my mind. I prefer this one. Probably just the angle of the smile, I guess. I think I like this one. I like this one. I look less chubby in this one. Our results seem to follow the theories quite closely. In 60% of cases, people chose the mirrored image of themselves as the one they preferred. 
When choosing a partner's photo, the choice should be the opposite way round. The individual should choose the non-mirrored image because that's how they see their partner on a daily basis. Don't forget, image A is the mirrored photo and image B is the normal one. I prefer this one of, uh, of Shell. That one, it just is just my more him, so much more natural. I prefer this one because he looks more relaxed and it seems more casual than the other one. I prefer this one. Again, it's really hard to say, but yeah, I think, I think this one. That one. Because the other one, his head looks crooked and he doesn't crook his head like that. This one again. This one, definitely this one. I definitely prefer this one. I like the smile better on this one. He's got sort of a crooked smile in this one, it looks like. So I prefer this one. This doesn't really look like my Alex, but this one does. That's quite clear. When selecting photos of their partners, there was a 90% accuracy rate in selecting the non-mirrored image. The theories seem to be accurate. In our experiment, 15 times out of 20, 75%, the subjects followed the science picking mirrored images of themselves and normal images of their partner as their preferred photographs. I, I picked the mirrored one, the one that I see all the time. But, but that is how you look. I don't want that to be how I look. <laughs> but you definitely look better in that one, because that one you look yeah. really serious. You're telling me that that's all out of balance. It's still me. It is still you, but it just doesn't look like you. So that one's more natural to you than that? Yes, exactly. I think that this one looks more like me. This is what I see when I look in the mirror, but I obviously don't because this is me. I think it's because you, probably because you've got quite a symmetrical face that it's harder to tell which one's which. I'm used to looking like that. <laughs> but you do look better in that one. Though. So that's a good thing because that's how you actually look. OK. Yeah. One of the reasons those who chose the normal photos of themselves weren't swayed towards their mirrored images may be because they have slightly more symmetrical faces and so it's more difficult to see a difference. In the media, symmetrical faces are highly sought after as they are considered to be more attractive. So much so, in fact, that some images in adverts and magazines are altered to make facial features such as eyes and ears identical on both sides. Nowadays, pretty much any image that you'll find in a magazine will have been edited in some way. So, we're going to take a look at just how much a picture can be manipulated using me as the example. Yay. Hello, Charlie. Good to meet you, mate. Let's get that top off. Yes, OK. Before Paul, our photographer, can work his magic, he needs some raw material to work with. So, it's time for my male model debut. Let's have a little bit more Arnie pose. Great down into the camera. Excellent. <laughs> Give it some nice attitude, Charlie. Cool. Thank you, Charlie. Excellent. Having worked my best poses, it's time for Tom, my body double, to get in front of the camera. Straight down the camera leg. Perfect. Paul is going to be replacing my body with Tom's and working some other digital miracles. Lovely. That's great, mate. Fantastic. We all know that images get manipulated to make people appear thinner or to have clearer skin. But they are also changed to make the person's face appear more symmetrical by duplicating eyes and other features across the face. A perfectly proportioned face is an indication that the body it sits on is well prepared to fight off infection. The common cold, asthma and flu are all more likely to be combated effectively by those whose left side matches their right. All of these qualities mean that symmetrical faces are perceived as being more attractive. Here I am in all of my digitally manipulated glory, with clear skin, symmetrical features and a buff new body. To me, it looks really weird, but even if I liked it, the changes are so extreme that I can never look like this. Many young people feel under pressure to look the same as the celebrities they see in photographs, online and in magazines. 
UK residents are set to splash out £659 million on cosmetic procedures and many of those will be trying to emulate this false image of perfection. By trying to live up to the misleading images in magazines, we are trying to live up to the impossible. Even the most attractive celebrities in the world have their photos improved digitally or even turned to surgery and many of the alterations made to models in photographs are biologically impossible. We measure ourselves against those people in the, in the limelight and celebrities. We don't really measure ourselves against your everyday person. So when you do look at yourself, you kind of compare yourself to somebody who probably isn't a real reflection of what someone in everyday life would look like. You look at somebody you think, oh, they're, they're beautiful, mm. all this makeup all so slim. But how do you know if it's fake or not? It's been touched right, up, exactly, so exactly. you've been pressurised to look all this beautiful. And but no one can look like that in real yeah. life. But I think that people overanalyze their own photos anyway. So whereas Dan would think, oh, she looks perfect, she looks beautiful, it's like I'd notice all those little things mm. because you overanalyze yourself. Oh, whereas yeah. you could look as good as someone in the media, but it's just that you look at yourself and you pick at stuff, whereas that person you just think, oh, they look beautiful. In the photos, we all said, like, oh, our faces look crooked. So people might get plastic surgery thinking, oh, I've got a crooked nose, but then they actually don't. It's just the way that they would look at themselves in the mirror. After what we've done today, I think if somebody does go and have plastic surgery on their face, you know, to correct their nose, your partner who knows you best, they probably just see you yeah. as totally different. Yeah. So, well, that looks wrong. That's not you. That's not how I found me attracted to you. It's just, it's totally different. So, familiarity does play a part in attraction, which makes perfect sense. It's important, though, that we keep a good perspective about what's considered beautiful or handsome. With so many manipulated images around, it would be easy to feel pressured and unhappy with ourselves. And all of our test subjects found their partners attractive, which goes to show that reality is beauty, even if it's not airbrushed perfection. To find out more and test out our chat-up line generator, go to scienceofattraction.co.uk.